Hello and welcome to DTWGED Prep. Welcome. So in today's video, we're going to be treating these questions. Okay, so this is on um, GED Math solving multi-step equations. I have um, done um, the one-step equation, so please do watch that video before you watch this. Okay, because it's going to help you, you know, go also understand this. Okay, so uh, we're going to be solving these 15 questions today. So I've, you know, put different type of questions, the way it can come out in the GED math test. All right. So uh, before we get on to solving these questions, if this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also you can check our website for summary notes, study guides, free practice questions, your GED formula sheet on dtwgedprep.com. Okay. So go to this website and you'll see a lot of resources, summary notes for your sciences, your social studies, okay, free practice questions on your RLA, all right, and also you can please do join our Facebook group, where over 22,000 members in the community, okay, if, um, you know, you want to know about the GED in your state, whichever state you are in, New York, um, Florida, California, whichever state you are in, Texas, okay, um, you know, just ask your questions on the group and you definitely find someone in the community to assist you. If you need resources, motivation, direction, just on the group, you all, you get that. It's a loving group, actually. So we're all there to support you, get your GED, so you know you move ahead in life. All right, I will leave all links in the video description box of this video. Also, if you want one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, for your math, science, social studies, or RLA, you can contact me, okay? And, uh, you know, we'll schedule. I'll leave my details in um the video description box of this video okay so now let's get on to solving these questions now number one says solve for x so you have this equation here so it is 2x minus 3 equal to 7 all right so what i'll do you know in equation is all about finding your x your x should stand alone okay so let's take these numbers take the constant the constant should be in one place y um the the terms with the variable should be on another side like on the left hand and the right hand so take your constants here so we have 2x equal to 7 remember when this 3 here is a negative all right every term has a sign 3 here is a negative so when taking crossing 3 over to the other side as far as it crosses this equal to sign the sign of three changes to the opposite side so negative three becomes positive three all right so here you now have two x and seven plus three is a ten to get our x is to divide by two so we divide by two divide by two so we can cancel out this two and we're left here with x because that's what we need we need x to stand alone all right so and ten divided by two is five so our answer here is 5. Now, number 2 says 4y plus 5 equal to 17. So we do the same thing, okay? Take like terms on one side, all right? So this is a constant, this is a constant, these are numbers. In math, numbers that stay alone are called constants. While this is a what? It's just one term, okay? This is 5, 4y where y is the variable and 4 is the coefficient of y, all right? That's, you know, that's in maths, that's the way it's been called, all right? So now we have to take 5 to this side. 5 is a positive. When crossing to this side, it becomes what? A negative. So we are left here with 4y equal to 17 minus 5, all right? So we now have 4y equal to 17 minus 5 would give us what? A 12. Now to get our y, we divide both sides by 4. So we can cancel out this 4. So remember, as I said in the first uh, video on one step equation, whatever you do to one part of the equation, you do to the other part. So that's why when we divide by 4 here, we also divide by 4. The same thing applied here. So when this cancels, we have y equal to 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, so this is the answer. Now, look at number three. Number three says 50 
equal to 3 in parentheses p plus 16 minus 2 in parentheses p minus 2. Okay, so we have 50 standing here alone. Now we have two parentheses, we have to distribute them. I have taught uh, distributive property, so uh, you can watch that video also. But let us do this. So we have to distribute this and also distribute this. So here we have 50. So this is distribute. We say 3 times P is 3P. And we say 3 times positive 16 is a what? Positive 48. So here we do minus 2. You don't do 2 times P. No. This 2 has a sign and it is a negative. Okay. So we say negative 2 times P is a negative 2p and negative 2 times a negative 2 give us a positive 4 look at it negative 2 times a negative 2 when you multiply negative and negative you have a positive and when you do 2 times 2 you have what 4 okay i have explained the um, sign rules okay so please do watch that video before you come here all right, you know, sign rules, that's when you have two, sign, uh, two negative and, you know, there's multiplication or division or addition or subtraction. What do you do? All right, it's very, very important you get this before, you know, you further come down to, uh, you know, equations. So now we can group like terms. I would prefer we can take the numbers to the side. Let's take the numbers to this side, all right, and leave, you know, the, the variables, the ones with the variables here. So we have 50 here. I'm going to take this positive 48. When I take it to this side, it becomes a negative 48. There's a 4 here. When I take this positive 4 to the other side, it becomes a negative 4. Equal to, we have 3p minus 2. That's what is left here, 3p and negative 2p. Okay, so let us, um, you know, combine this since they are all numbers. So in combining, we do 50 minus 48. It gives us 2. Then we have 2 minus 4 equal to, uh, this is uh, 3p minus 2p. That's like 1p. Okay, and what is 2 minus 4? This is a positive 2. Okay, so a positive 2 minus 4 is going to give us, we're going to subtract which will give us two, and the two will take the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So this minus two is equal to, in maths, we, we, don't, we don't leave it as one P, we leave it as P, because one times P is still P. Okay, so we have negative two equal to P, which is the same as P equal to a negative two. So this is our answer for question three. Now, let's look at question four. Question four says Q, plus 8 equal to 2q minus 4. Okay, I would prefer we take this here and bring this here. Okay, so we do 2p, you know, in equations, always do things that, you know, when you're trying to combine like terms, okay, just combine in a way that's easy for you. Okay, but always not, not, always make sure that whenever you cross anything over, the sign changes. Okay, so here, we have Q, I'm taking this 2Q here, it becomes, this is a positive 2Q, it becomes a negative 2Q. And here we have left here a negative 4. Don't forget, the sign of 4 is negative, so it should always be with it. All right, don't just leave out the negative. I see students, I tutor, they just leave out the negative. So, I, you know, these are errors that, you know, the people set in the exam know that students do do uh, do uh, omit okay do 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 uh is it do do it okay so uh so you you would see once you once you omit this negative you will see the answer in the options but it is wrong okay so don't omit the negative this is the negative four all right so we're taking this positive eight here it becomes a negative eight so what is a Q minus 2Q? You know, when a Q stands like this, there's an invisible one here. All right, so that's one, that's a positive one minus 2Q, okay? A positive one Q minus 2Q. We're going to subtract, so we get a one. And what sign will it take? It will take a negative one. So a negative one Q equal to a negative four, negative eight. 
what do we do? When you have two negative, you do addition. So we have 12 and the sign will be negative, the sign of a bigger number. All right. So here now we have a negative one. Q cannot be negative. So we have to divide both sides by a negative one. We divide by a negative one. So this cancels. We have Q equal to this negative cancels this negative to be positive. So 12 divided by one is a 12. So our answer here is 12. All right. Now let's go to that's um, number five. Let's let's manage the space here. So we have five x minus two equal to thirty. So you can see here we have to distribute this. So we have five times x is five x, and five times negative two that's a negative ten equal to thirty. So here we have to now take this ten to this side so we can combine like terms. So we have five x equal to 30 taking negative to this side it becomes a positive 10 all right so we have 5x equal to 30 plus 10 is 40 so we divide both sides by 5 so we can get our x so uh that would be x equal to 40 divided by 5 is 8 so x is equal to 8 that's our answer there now let us do for number six we have two in parentheses r plus three equal to 16. we do the same thing we distribute so we have 2r and we have plus positive 2 times positive 3 that's a positive 6 equal to 16. we take positive 16 to this side okay so we have 16 taking it to this side becomes negative 6. all right so we have 2r equal to 16 minus 6 that will give us 10 then we divide by 2 divide by 2 this cancels out we have r is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. All right. So we are number 6. Let me clear the screen. All right. Now, number 7 says 3 in parentheses s uh, divided by 4 equal to 9. So when I open up this parentheses, that will be 3 times this. That's 3s over 4 equal to 9. Now, when you now have fractions in equation, all right, what do you do? This is the only denominator in this in this equation all right in this equation problem so definitely the the lcm will be four all right so what do you do you multiply both sides by four so multiply here by four multiply here by four what why are we multiplying by four is so we can cancel out this fraction okay because in equations we don't for us to solve it well, let us, we have to first cancel out the fraction, then we'll solve. So when we do that, multiply both sides by 4, look for whichever LCM that, um, you know, the LCM of the denominator. So we cancel out every denominator. So this cancels out. We are left here with 3S equal to 9 times 4. This gives us, what, 36. Okay. And remember, whatever you're using to multiply, to cancel, you must do it to both sides. That is the rule of equation. Whatever you're doing, it must be done to both sides. You're dividing or multiplying, it will be done to both sides. Okay. Now, so here to get our S, we divide by three, divide by three. So this cancels out. We have S is equal to 36 divided by three gives us 12. So this is our answer. Our answer is 12. So let's look at number 8. Number 8 says 6 in parentheses 2x minus 5 equal to 54. So we distribute 6 times this, that's 12x. And 6 times a negative 5, that's a negative 30 equal to 54. We collect like terms, so we take 30 to this side. Okay, so we can combine them. So we have 12x equal to 54, taking negative 30 here becomes a positive 30, okay? So we have 12x, this plus this, that's 4, uh, 84, okay? So we divide both sides by 12, all right? And x gives us what? 84 divided by 12 is a 7. So this is our answer for number 8. Number 9 says what? t over 3 plus 4 equal to 10. Okay, what do we do here? The first thing I would do is, since this guy here doesn't have a fraction, a denominator, I'll take 4 to the other side. So it's t over 3 equal to 10. Taking 4 to the other side becomes a negative 4. So I now have t over 3 equal to 
10 minus 4, that's 6. Now, I need to cancel out this denominator. What do I do? I would multiply both sides by 3. Okay? Multiply by 3. All right, so I cancel here, cancel here. I'm left here with t, and 6 times 3 will give me what? 18. Do you see that? Okay, so our aim is to make t stand alone. So we have to cancel out this fraction. All right, and to cancel out this fraction, since um, what is binding t and 3 here is division, we do the opposite, which is multiplication. So we multiply by 3, both sides by 3, and it gives us this 18. Now, look at number 10. Number 10 says 3x plus 5 plus 6x equal to negative 31. I can combine these two here. So we have 3x plus 6x equal to negative 31. I take positive to this side, becomes a negative 5. So here, 3x plus 6x, what would that give us? That would give us 9x. And what is a negative 31, negative 5? Mm. When you have two negative numbers, you do addition. So we have 36, and the sign will take the sign of the bigger number, which is what negative. So here now, to get our x, we divide both sides by 9. This cancels out. And x is equal to, uh, definitely this is going to be a negative answer. All right, so and 36 divided by 9 is a 4. So we have our answer as a negative 4. All right, in division, when you have a negative and a positive number dividing, your answer would be a negative, okay? When you have two negative number dividing, your answer will be a positive. Okay, so look, let's do this here. So this is 4y plus 2 in parentheses, y plus 2 equal to 52. So here we have 4y, we open up this parentheses, so that's positive 2 times y, that's a positive 2y, and positive 2 times positive 2, that's a positive 4, equal to 52. I can take 4 here, I leave these guys here. So we have 4y plus 2y, since they are like terms. You know, we have done a polynomials, combining like terms, we've done all those, so, you know, it's a progression, so watch you know, there's a prerequisite to this video, so that will make you understand better. All right. So we have 52 minus 4. You know, taking positive to this side becomes a negative. So this plus this is a 6y. And what is 52 minus 4? It's going to give us 48. So we divide both sides by 6. Divide by 6. Okay. And y is equal to 48 uh, divided by 6. What would that give us? 48 divided by 6. It's going to give us 8. Okay, 8. All right, 6 times 8 is 48. All right, now here, um, let's, let's, clear, let's clear the screen. Okay, so number 12 says 8 in parentheses 2d minus 3 equal to 3 in parentheses 4d minus 7. So here, we have to first open up the parentheses by distributing before we combine. All right, so 8 times here, that's 16d. 8 times negative 3, that's negative 24, equal to 3 times 4d, that's a 12d. And 3 times negative 7, that's a negative 21. We combine like terms. Let's take this guy here and take this guy here. So uh, we have 16d. Taking a positive, this is a positive 12. Taking a positive 12, the sign of a term is always that one in front of it, okay? So taking a positive 12 here, it becomes a negative 12d equal to, we have a negative 21 left here. And taking a negative 24 here, it becomes a positive 24. So what is 6d minus 12d? That gives us what? 4d equal to, what is a negative 21, positive 24? We're going to subtract, and that will give us 3, as we subtract 21 from 24, and the sign will take a positive sign, the sign of the bigger number. So to get our D, we divide by 4, divide by 4. So here, D is equal to 3 over 4. So that's our answer. All right, now, number 13 says, negative 5, negative X equal to 2X minus 4, in parentheses, there's a parenthesis here, X plus 6. Close the parentheses. Okay, so here we now have negative 5, negative x. Let's go to the parentheses. So we have 2x. Now, here, 
okay, you don't just open up the parenthesis like that. There's a negative in front of the parenthesis. So this negative sign would affect everything here. So it, there's like an invisible one. Just make it act like an invisible one. So it's going to be an invisible minus a negative one that would this that we're going to distribute to this in this parenthesis. So we have this negative one times here. All right. This invisible one, when it multiplies everything here, it's still 4x plus 6. But now there's a negative. All right. So the negative is going to affect everything. All right. So a negative one times a 4x will give us a negative 4x. And a negative one times a positive 6 will give us a negative 6. So here now we can combine. I would prefer, since we have two uh, terms with the variable x, let's just take this guy here and bring negative 6 here. You know, so we don't stress ourselves. All right. So we have negative 5. Bringing this negative 6 here becomes a positive 6 equal to what here, we have here 2x minus 4x. Then we take this negative x to this side. It becomes a positive x. Now we have negative 5 plus 6 will give us a 1. All right. Now we have a 2x minus 4x is going to give us a minus 2x. And a minus 2x plus x, you know, this x here acts like oh, there's an invisible one, all right? So that's a minus 2 plus 1, a minus 2x plus 1x. That gives us a negative 1x. Do you see that? So, you know, x cannot be left as a negative. So we divide both sides by negative, divide by negative, and this negative cancels this negative. We just were left with a positive x here, and a 1 divided by a negative 1 is a negative 1. So negative 1 is equal to x, and it's also the same as x equal to a negative 1. So this is our answer. All right, now let's go to number 14. 14 says uh, 5 in parentheses, 2n minus 10. Close the parentheses, we have a denominator here, plus 14 equal to 19 all right since this 14 here doesn't have like a fraction i will prefer let's quickly take it to this side so we combine these two so we have five uh, <clears throat> uh five in parentheses 2n minus 10 over 2 equal to 19 taking positive 14 here becomes a negative 14 all right so we have five 2n minus 10 over 2 equal to 19 minus 5, 4 is a 5. So now we have a fraction. We need to cancel out this fraction. This is the only denominator in this equation. All right. So we need to cancel out. To cancel out, all we need to do is just multiply both sides by 2. We multiply all this by 2 and multiply here by 2. So since we have a 2 here, we have a 2 here. It will cancel out this 2. You know, that's that's the aim of multiplying. We're trying to cancel out the den denominator. All right, so it cancels out the 2. So we're finally left with 5 in parentheses, 2n minus 10. And here is 5 times 2, which is 10. And I told you, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other side. That's why we multiply here 2 by 2. So from here... Let's go up here. So we have 5. We open the parentheses. 5 times 2n gives us what? 10n. And 5 times minus 10 gives us what? A minus 50 equal to 10. So I can take 50 to this side. So I now have n equal to 10. Taking negative 50 to this side becomes a positive 50. So we have 10n equal to 10 plus 50. That's 60. Okay. To get n, we divide both sides by 10. All right, n is equal to 60 divided by 10 is a 6. Do you see that? Okay, now let's go to the final question, which says here, 4t plus 3 over 5 equal to t plus 3 over 2. Now, you can see we have two fractions on the same side, in the same equation. So what do we do? find the lcm of 5 and 2 what is the lcm of 5 and 2 is simply what 10 all right that's the least common multiple of 5 and 
2. All right, I hope you know how to get LCM. Let's say this is 5, let's say this is 2. So the else the common multiples of 2, we have uh, uh, the multiples of 2. We have uh, 2, we have 4, we have uh, 8, we have, that's 2 times 2, 2 times, we have 6 first, 2 times 2, 2 times 4, uh, 2 times, uh, uh, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4, 8, 2 times 5, 10. Let's stop here. Here, 5 is 5 times 1, 5, 5 times 2, 10. And the least common multiple here, that's the common multiple that it has the least number, all right, that it has that is common. So we have 10, 10. So that's how you find the least common multiple. So we have our least common multiple as 10. So we then therefore multiply both sides by 10. So this is times 10, times 10, okay, times 10. So when we do that, it will cancel out the denominator. So 5 will cancel out as 1. 5 in 10 is 2. So this 2 will multiply here. So we have 2 in parentheses. 4t plus 3 equal to 2 here, 1. 2 in 10 will go how many times? It will go 5 times. So 5 will multiply here. So we have 5 in parentheses. t plus 3. So now we distribute 2 times this guy gives us 8t, 2 times this guy gives us 6 equal to 5 times t, that's 5t, and 5 times 3, that will give us what, 15. We combine like terms. Let's take 5 here, bring 6 here. So we have 8t, taking a positive 5 here gives us a negative 5t equal to, well, this is quite a long video, quite testy right now. Um, so here we have 15. Uh, then 6, taking it here, becomes a negative 6. So here we have 8 minus 5t gives us what? 3t. And what is 15 minus 6? What will 15 minus 6 give, give us to give us a 9? So to get t, we divide both sides by 3. This cancels. So our t is equal to 9 divided by 3 is a 3. So t is equal to 3. So thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please do give this video a thumbs up, like, subscribe to this channel, share this channel with your friends, family, and loved ones. You can also check our website, dtwgdprep.com for more summary notes, you know, study practice, study guides, you know, uh, to help you in your exam. You can join our Facebook group very very interesting group that would uh, support you in your um, in, in your journey to get your GED. All the links will be in the video descri description box of this video. You can contact me for one-on-one -on -one tutoring, all right? And I will, uh, you know, schedule a time with you, okay? And um, finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Please do give your life to Christ. For he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the one who is going to lead us to heaven at last and give us that peace that we desire here on earth. So please do come on to him and he will give you rest. All right, I make you a new creature in Jesus' name. Amen. So I wish you success in your forthcoming GED test and also in life. Take care and see you in our next video.